Hey there. So the U.S. relationship with China just took a nasty turn. Meng Wanzhou, the CFO of Huawei, one of China's most successful companies, has been arrested in Canada at U.S. insistence, supposedly for actions related to Iran sanctions. It's worth unpacking this incredibly stupid move a bit because it relates to one of the central themes of this YouTube channel. The fact that the United States is a lot more powerful than is commonly understood. One of the central untruths that U.S. media and government put out there is that the United States is just a country like any other, with its own priorities and policies struggling along. This myth is central to the fantasy that we are seriously threatened by geopolitical pygmies like Iran or Russia. The truth is very different. The United States runs the world, in small part through military strength, but much more importantly through a web of institutions, financial ties, and legal relationships that dictate to the world in surprising ways. I've written at length about FATCA, the Foreign Account Tax Compliance Act, and how it makes the whole world subject to the IRS, the U.S. Tax Authority. FATCA is just one small aspect of the powers that the U.S. judicial systems claim over the entire world. The key thing about this vast U.S. power is that it's usually hidden by consent and complexity. Most of the world's countries are content to let the U.S. use this power because A. They used to trust the United States to do things that were generally in the world's interests, and B. Because the financial and legal complexities of these issues is so high that nobody without a law degree and a spare six months to cover any given issue could truly understand how powerful the United States was. Uh, we learned earlier this year that most of the leaders of Europe's most powerful countries have no idea how this works either. Meng Wanzhou is reportedly being held for her company's violations of Iran's sanctions. Earlier this year, the Trump administration unilaterally destroyed the Iran nuclear deal. Macron of France, Merkel of Germany, and some others angrily declared that this was impossible. It was a multilateral agreement, and Germany and France were sticking by it. German and French companies, however, didn't agree with them on that. What these European companies knew, and their leaders didn't, was that the United States has too much financial and legal power to be denied. The U.S. has the ability to ruin foreign companies under multiple laws for transactions that have nothing to do with the United States. It's Washington, D.C.'s world, and the rest of us are just living in it. We talk a lot about the importance of the rule of law in the United States, and the ideal that the law is the law is something to be strived for. But as any law enforcement functionary will tell you, from the Supreme Court justices down to your local police officer, the law is also always political. Back during the Great Depression, the Supreme Court got out of FDR's way when FDR threatened to reorganize the Supreme Court. As another example, police almost never arrest rich white people for drug crimes in the United States, and when they do, those rich white people never actually suffer any real consequences. Because if they did, the laws would have to change, and we'd have many fewer jobs for police officers. And that's why this prosecution is so, so stupid from the perspective of U.S. power. Meng Wanzhou is the rich white guy of Iran sanctions prosecution. Other high-profile proceedings have gone after much, much easier targets. Reza Zarab was a super shady guy who was picked up while partying in Miami. The prosecution of the Standard Chartered Bank didn't involve any embarrassing arrests, and everybody's usually happy to see a big bank get fined. Turkey and the United Kingdom weren't happy about these prosecutions, but they came in the context of Iran sanctions that they had at least officially agreed to under Obama. What the Trump administration has done here is engineer the arrest of one of the richer and more powerful people in all of China, in a non-U.S. country, pursuant to an Iran policy that nobody agrees with. This is not the way to preserve U.S. power. In the short term, I think Trump is likely to get away with this, but China's leaders just got a lot more interested in working with Europe to make sure that this sort of thing doesn't happen in the future. As with most of what Trump does, it's future U.S. presidents that are going to have to deal with the wreckage from all this, not Trump.
Oh, and as a postscript, I can already see some Trump defenders arguing that arresting this woman is savvy deal-making in Trump's trade negotiations with China. I have a clip from earlier this year dealing with Turkey that I think responds to that argument pretty well. Two years later, the Turks have failed to make their case against Brunson, and the United States has lost its patience. To make matters worse, Erdogan made it clear in a speech last September that Brunson is being held as a hostage for the extradition of somebody the Turkish government wants. Fethullah Gulen, a Muslim cleric living in Pennsylvania, is the alleged mastermind of the 2016 coup attempt. Last September, Erdogan explicitly stated that he wanted to do a swap. This was really, really dumb. Erdogan's statement took Turkey, a much-abused U.S. ally, and made it look like a criminal, hostage-taking state. Using judicial proceedings to take hostages for other negotiations is a game we really shouldn't be playing with China. Actually, it's a game we shouldn't be playing at all. It's dangerous and sleazy. The resolution of the ZTE affair was corrupt enough. We shouldn't be putting people's freedom on the line as well. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you want to help me keep making videos like this one, you can click on the Patreon link here to check out my crowdfunding thing.